Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can take inexpensive watercolor paint and turn them into gouache. So what I have here is some very inexpensive watercolor paint from Joy Art, and I decided to choose three colors out of the set of 24 um, because I wanted to work with a limited palette. That way, if you were um, doing this at home and you wanted to you know, try this out, but maybe you just wanted to buy a couple tubes of paint, you could do that as well. I'm gonna start off with cadmium yellow. Um, this cadmium yellow definitely looked definitely looks like a middle of the road neutral yellow to me. I'm going to use some rose which is a nice cool reddish pink and you probably don't need quite that much but if you don't use it up you can leave it in your palette and just re-wet it and use it later. And I'm going to use some Prussian blue which actually their Prussian blue looks a lot more like phthalo blue so um, I would I would go with the phthalo blue. It's just this Prussian looks like it's probably the same pigment as phthalo and I think it's going to work pretty well. And I want a neutral color and I'm going to use raw umber. So I'm just going to squirt that out here in the middle. And then in each of these wells, I'm going to add some white. I'm not going to mix it directly, but I am going to keep um, quite a good sized puddle next to each color so that I can mix it in as needed. And again, any of these colors can be reused, so you might not want to mix it all up right off the bat. So now what I'm going to do is grab some watercolor paper and I'm going to use a handmade watercolor paper that's quite rough because I think it would be really nice with a gouache type of technique where you use your paints a little bit thicker. I wanted to paint kind of a pastel scene and when I'm using gouache I tend to want to use a little bit stiffer for brush than the watercolor brushes I usually use and um, I'm going to apply my paint a little bit thicker. So I'm going to start by um, um, I'm going to wet the sky and I'm going to wet about at the top third of the paper. Now you don't need to. If I was working on a dark surface I would not um, wet the sky but since I am on white I do want the paper, the paint to flow a little bit. So I'm wetting this so for ease of um, ease of my paint flowing. Also if you have acrylic paints you can do this with your acrylics too. Um, you'll just need to you know, just make sure you keep your paint wet enough so that you can blend because once acrylics dry, they are not reworkable, but gouache is re reworkable. So I want to get kind of a pink color, so I'm going to start off with some white and pull some of that rose into it. I don't want to mix it all up yet because I might want to vary the amount of um, pink that I have. And you can see I'm getting this um, really creamy color and this is what artists refer to as body color. If you're ever um, looking at any older art books you'll hear um, body cover color being referred to and that's what they mean here, this really um, opaque color. So it's usually any watercolor with Chinese white mixed in. You can also get titanium white um, watercolor or titanium white gouache and that would be a little bit more opaque if you feel like you need a little bit more coverage. And I'm just going to kind of pull some of that up into the sky. And I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to grab some yellow. I think I'm going to blot a little bit over here because I do want the sun kind of uh, setting. So I want to remove a little bit of that pink, I think, right from right about there. It's okay if you don't take it all the way off the paper because gouache is opaque and we'll be able to layer over. So by adding our water, our white, to our paint, we're getting um, a more opaque color. Now the yellow is very strong here so I don't need a lot of um, of that color and I'm gonna add that right in here. I'm gonna try not to mix it in with the pink yet and I am going to kind of spread it out as if the sun is setting here and I'm bringing that color out and I'm gonna bring it across and as I bring it across I can mix it in with that pink a little bit. And get them to blend where they meet there. And then you can just pull this up. And you can use any of your watercolor brushes for this. It's not going to hurt anything, uh, but you may have a little bit better result going with a um, brush that's a little bit uh, stiffer. Now here, I don't want to go directly into blue because um, that's going to make green because we have that yellow there. So what I'm doing is using some water just to soften that edge. Then I'm going to grab some white on its own. That's why I said don't mix everything up yet. I'm gonna grab some white and I'm going to make a barrier, just like a strip of, of white tacked as a barrier. And you want to pull that all the way across. And actually I'm going to grab a little bit of white and add it right here where the sun is setting. And we can overlay a little bit more after that dries. 
And then I'm going to mix some white with a little bit of blue. You, this blue is super strong. You don't need a lot of it. Just a little bit. Nice pretty pastel sunset. And this time I'm going to start this at the top of the paper and I'm going to work it down. If you're working on a larger paper than I am, um, you'll want to use a bigger brush. Okay, so make sure you match the size of your brush to the size of the paper you're working on. I like this handmade paper. It's really um, a really fun surface to do watercolor on or gouache on, or you could even use your acrylic paints on it. If you wanted to use oils on it though, you would need to prime it because the oil paint would kind of disintegrate that over time. I decided I wanted a little bit bluer up here, so I just picked up a little bit more of the uh, Prussian blue or phthalo blue, depending on what you're, what set you're using. And I'm just working it back and forth. I can pick up a little bit more white for right underneath there and get a really pretty blend in here without any green. Somebody had been asking me about doing the sunset. Um, how do you get it to go from blue to yellow without getting the green? And that's how you do it. Now you're going to want some clouds in the sky probably. And I think we'll do a very soft lavender for our clouds. So for lavender, we need to first make purple. And we're going to use the rose for that. And then some of our blue. You can see we're getting a nice purple there. And then we'll just grab some white and I'm just going to grab it right out of the rose section here. Okay, this is a great introductory too. If you've been painting with watercolors for a while and you just kind of would like to try working with maybe acrylics, but you don't want to buy new brushes or you don't want to buy a bunch of new supplies. This, this is a great way you can use the watercolors you already have, get that feeling um, and then decide if you do want to branch out into something else. I do try to keep my gouache paintings fairly small because the tubes of watercolor and gouache are generally smaller than acrylic. So if you do want to go larger, it'll be much more cost effective uh, just to get some inexpensive acrylics to play with. But I'm a big fan of using what you have. And if you already have watercolors, then this is a great solution. Just make your own gouache with some white. Now the drawbacks to making your own gouache versus buying pre-made gouache is that when you buy pre-made gouache, you can get lots of really vibrant colors. Um, and if you're making your own, you're going to be limited to some softer colors because you're adding white to everything instead of just using more opaque pigments. So that's a, a little bit of a trade-off that you have there. You can also see some orange colored clouds. So to do that, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow. I'll just bring it over here into this mixing area. I'll turn my palette so you can see it. And a tiny little smidgen of the rose because that's a really strong color. Maybe a little bit more. And then some white. And there we can add that into the sky. And these would be those clouds that are getting hit by the sunset. I have some more of those over here too. So you'll get like a variety of of purple and orange clouds. I may mix up a little bit more of that. So I still think it's a good idea to keep those colors separate on your palette um, and only just mixing up what you need in case you change your mind. Maybe you don't like this technique, you don't want to use up you know, too much of your paint if you're not sure about it yet. And we're just going to add some more clouds in here. Very, very subtle. I'm going to add a little bit more white in here. Flesh out these clouds a little bit more. The only thing you want to worry about is if you have a lot of yellow in your mix and you're going up in the blue area, that could cause um, some green. And like if you were doing purple right on top of the yellow, you could end up with some brown. So if that's happening, you can always let things dry and then uh, come back later. And if your paint dries on, you just wet your brush and then you can reconstitute it and bring it up. I'm going to add some purple clouds up there just to kind of negate the green a little bit. And you can always just brush mix what you need. Now, if you absolutely love this technique, and a lot of times, like you'll start off with some student grade paints, and you might just really love watercolor and decide, okay, that's it. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna um, splurge. I'm gonna get myself some nice, uh, more expensive artist grade paints. And then you have these student grade paints left over, and then you're like, well, geez, what do I do with these? This is what you do with them. You can go ahead and turn them into gouache, and then get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more use out of them. 
The clouds are really fun. It's really easy to go to go overboard with them too. Now if you find you have any rough edges that you don't like, you can always simply clean your brush off and go in with it damp and you can kind of manipulate things around. You can soften edges and get it just the way you want it. Okay, I think that's pretty good for now. Now I want to get some um, watercolor and I'm going to go with my Prussian blue and I'm going to grab some water into that. And I think I'm also going to add a little bit of yellow to make it a little bit green so I can get kind of like a turquoise color. That's really pretty. And I'm going to start this kind of up here at the horizon, right underneath where the sky is. And since we're using our colors thicker, you are not going to be getting, um, uh, you're, you're not going to be getting it feathering it into each other as much. And also because we're on a dark paper, it's not going to want to feather quite as much. And we can bring that color in. We can add some water to help it spread out. I mean, that was really pretty shades. Now I want a little island back over here so I'm actually going to bring that over like that and then I am going to just kind of sketch in a shoreline like this and I will link a reference photo down below so you have something to go by if you feel like you need a little bit more um, a little more guidance. Now I'm going to wet this area in here and of course if I was doing this on like a piece of matte board or um, a dark panel or just something that wasn't white, I would not add the water because that would make it too transparent. But I'm doing it here because it is going to help my paint flow a little bit. And you can vary your colors too, so you could grab a little bit more blue in some areas and a little less white if you wanted to darken the color. You could add more white if you wanted to lighten it. Now of course there are 24 colors in the paints that I was showing you, so you can make um, if you wanted a more vibrant scene or you just wanted like more of like an emerald green tone instead of um, this kind of mixed color that we have here, you could totally do that. That's up to you. And I throw some of this green in here. And once that dries, you can also go in and add some, um, add some deeper shadows and that sort of thing, which we'll do after that's dry. Just want to get the, uh, get pretty much everything filled in for now. I want it a little bit deeper in color as it's further away. Okay, for that, now we're going to do some kind of sandy colors. And for that, I am going to take the uh, white and burnt umber. That is a really strong brown, so you don't need very much of it. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of that mixed orange there too because that I think that's a good sand color so I'm going to scoop up some of that add that in add a little bit of rose in there and so you can get the colors you want I wanted this to be a very limited palette in case you were you know you were working from a limited palette and it's a good idea to be able to mix your colors so I'm adding this color in in its darkest iteration here right next to the um, the water kind of coming in the wave and I'm going to put some back here for our little beach around the corner we can fill, actually we can fill that right in there because we're going to have some trees some palm trees over there and then I am cleaning my brush I'm going to clean up this area here I'm just going to clean that up and grab some of that color and bring it over to this pot of sand color. And I'm going to grab a little more of the red and mix that in. Add quite a big, bit of the white and we'll get our nice sand color here. Can you see that well? Let's move that over just a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. And then we can fill it in. And I didn't add water to the paper. I wanted this to be nice and thick here and nice and opaque 
But I'm going to show you a trick where we add a little water to that in a second. We're going to blend that right up into those shadows. I sometimes will wet my brush just so I can get the, uh, the paint to flow. But this technique is really fun, especially if you like to go out and about and you're painting. I don't know if you can hear all those crows in the background. There are like, there's like a crow convention outside right now. Um, but especially if you're going out and you're painting um, on location somewhere and you're in a rush, sometimes just having that addition of white and going gouache instead of uh, watercolor can help you render your subject a lot quicker. And I'll just do that in there, give that brown for a little bit of extra um, shadow there. And then I'm just going to add some water to an empty well here, clean my brush off. Actually grab some of this color. And I am going to swirl some of this really, really watery kind of into the, uh, the ocean water here. So you can kind of see where the water the, the foam is whooshing over it and you're seeing some of the some of the water um, in some of the sand through the water I guess with a thin veil of water is what I'm trying to say so you can see kind of those those waves coming coming forward now that's gonna dry before we do any more to that um, so I'm gonna switch brushes here let's go to something smaller I find that flat brushes work really well when you're using gouache um, you just get a a little bit more control. I want to make a nice dark um, green color for some foliage so I'm going to take uh, some yellow and let's get a fresh spot in our palette. We'll go over here and I'm going to grab some blue. That's a lot of blue. I don't need that much. Now these are going to be palm trees far away so you're not going to be able to see that much detail so, um, so I don't need to put too much in. I'm going to grab a little bit of brown. And I am just going to kind of go and tap in some foliage. So this isn't distinct. This isn't anything. These certainly aren't evergreen trees. <laughs> kind of looks like it. That's how I paint evergreen trees too. Um, we're just going to flick up some shapes over here. Messier the better. Even if this is like nondescript foliage. We don't really know what's going on over there. It's all right. We just know it's something. Something's over there further away. And now I'm going to switch to a round brush and I am going to get it wet because we need our paint to move. Our paint's not going to want to move on its own as well um, because it's kind of thick here. We'll mix up our... I didn't put any white in this just because um, if I add white to it, it's going to be real pastel and this is really kind of far away. It needs to be uh, darker. I'm going to throw in a few palm trees. Let my brush to help it, help it move and then I'm going to just throw on some just suggestions of the palm fronds. And I think things look good in three, so I'm going to put uh, another one over here. And that's really all you need. You can add some little dabs here and there, but that's that's off in the distance. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to leave that be. Now, something else we're going to do is we're going to have a nice, fresh, clean brush. It's nice and dry without any paint on it, and we're going to add the sun. And the sun is going to be nice and bright white, and that's going to be right over here. Actually, I would have had it over more in like where that yellow is, but I uh, I didn't plan that very well, so I'm just going to put it in here, and then we'll add some yellow around it. And I'm just going to kind of drag out some of the some of the light. I'm also going to go into a little bit more white so I have something to blend into here. And I am going to be adding some of this onto the water. I'm going to clean my brush in case I ended up picking up any of the blue. I don't want that. I don't want to have a green sunset. To use white and yellow to make a nice sunny, pastel sunny color. And that's going to go right around here. I might need to soften that with a little bit of water after I get the colors laid down, but right now I just want to get that that color in there. Because where I didn't, I had, I should have had more yellow over here. I didn't plan that very well. That's why I'm doing this. You might not need to do it if you planned better than I did. 
that yellow is pretty opaque. That's me start, uh, spreading that yellow out full strength. That is pretty opaque, which is great. Yellows tend to be opaque uh, generally, so so it's a it's a good color to to use if you're doing a gouache technique. And I'm going to throw a little bit of that carefully on the water there. Not a lot. I probably have a little bit more than I need. So what I'm going to do is clean my brush off and just soften it a little bit. And there we go. Now we can take out some of the uh, pinks and add that into the water here and there. Just go kind of easy with it. just have it kind of reflect. I would try to pull it in some places where I don't have a lot of color in the water, like areas that are a little bit lighter. You can also bring it into the um, surf area here. If you get a little streaky, you can go in and soften it. Because the only thing I think you'd want broken like that would be, would be like the foam. Um, otherwise it doesn't look as... Uh, is watery. At this point we want to dry this so that we can add our final touches of the white foam on the water and then we'll be done. To add the sparkles of foam on our water we're simply going to just grab some white and since you didn't mix up all your whites you've got some fresh puddles to draw from and I'm just going to grab whatever's closest doesn't really matter as long as it's fresh and I am just going to kind of dab in that white. I like to get the edges of the um, the water where it's coming in here and then go a little bit further into the water and kind of pull in some other little kind of swirls and it's okay if this is broken because it's gonna look um, more realistic because you would you know how it's kind of like you've these broken um, chunks of foam that's what you want to uh, that's what you want to show and that's really easy to do on this rough paper because the paper kind of wants to the brush kind of wants to skip on the um, nooks and crannies of the paper the hills and valleys and if you find the areas in the on the sand that got a little skipped don't worry we're gonna do something about that in a second and keep your shoreline in mind more so than your horizon line as you're doing this because your waves are going to match the shoreline more than the horizon line so just kind of kind of keep that as your main reference from where you're of, of where you're putting your foam in okay if you get too much somewhere you can just lightly uh, soften it with your brush just kind of go in with an area and just a wet brush and you can soften that now if you want some darker areas in the water you can do that too I would do your blue and yellow just about on its own I wouldn't add white to it and then you'll keep that trans you'll keep some transparency it'll keep it dark because we're not using real gouache we're using a um, you know we're using a watercolor as gouache so if we add the water, if we add the white to it rather, we're going to end up with um, with pastel shades. So if you need darker shades, you do just have to kind of use it more transparent. And you can throw in some, some deeper colors. I wouldn't get too crazy with that. I think less is more a lot of the time with something like this. And if you get too much or if it skips too much, like you don't want that to skip as much as the white, just wet your brush a little bit and spread out the color, help it flow, and that will give you a nice effect. Sometimes looking at the picture, squinting a little bit, you'll be able to see, oh, that's way too dark, you know, or that needs to be darker, and you can kind of spread things out as you need to. So then for the, um, the ground here, if you see some areas that are not covered very well, what you want to do is just go in with a wet brush and work over it. You're not going to get the cauliflowers, like you would get with watercolor because of the body of the white paint. It's going to keep your paint from like flowing and giving you those odd um, those odd shapes. Now something you might want to have in here is a little bit of reflection on the wet sand and that would be with your yellow, so yellow and white. And you can add some of that in here into the sand. And you could do a little orange too in there. 
So I just picked up some of that mixed pink and I'm going to add that in to the sand as well. I'm being real sloppy because I'm going to blend it with a different brush in a second. So don't worry about that. I'm going to do a little bit more yellow right, I'm white rather, I'm sorry, white right in the center of that. And then I'm just going to grab a flat brush to spread it a little bit. It's real subtle, but it just gives you that uh, that subtle sunset reflecting on the wet the wet sand there. And if you see any other little spots where your paint skipped and you want to touch it up, you go ahead just with a stiff wet brush and you can fix it. And there you have it. I'll bring it up a little bit closer to the camera so you can see how it turned out. Uh, this was a lot of fun to paint and it gives you another way to use your watercolors, um, especially if maybe you um, maybe didn't like transparent watercolors or you're thinking about trying gouache but you didn't quite want to spend the money yet or you've upgraded your watercolors and now you have some student grade watercolors that you don't know what to do with. I'm all about using your supplies because owning a bazillion different supplies doesn't make you an artist using your supplies makes you an artist please let me know if you have any questions below if you like this video i'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up thank you for watching until next time happy crafting